Okay, often you'll, uh, if you've been following me on Instagram or you watch some of the videos or even just sort of get an idea of my thoughts upon strength and conditioning, um, I often get probably a little bit caught up with maybe seeming like I'm downplaying it. Now, please do not um, get me wrong. The reason, the need or the necessity for strength and conditioning is very, very real. What I'm always talking about is um, strength and conditioning and its influence on the movement patterns of running, in this case, but for the most other skills and movement patterns as well. So the coordination, the patterns, the positioning that you do these things are completely separate to the strength and conditioning, um, the, the improvement of performance, the, the um, prevention of injury that strength and conditioning can have or does influence. Hey everyone, I'm Nick Jankowskis and in terms of my background, I'm a sports scientist by trade, uh, working here at Mets Performance, which is where we are today. Uh, we're an endurance performance uh, business specialising in things like triathlon, cycling, running, um, and improving the, the performance aspect uh, of athletes of all levels, so amateur right through uh, to elite. My background in training uh, is obviously in sports science, so a bachelor's degree in exercise and sports science, and then also a master's of high performance, which I finished recently uh, earlier last year. So um, wealth of knowledge in terms of the performance aspect and bringing the science to the actual field when it comes to uh, applying training and, and interventions to make sure athletes are getting the most out of their training, but also staying out there and continuing to train, which is a really important part as well avoiding injury in a life. So the reason why um, we've got some strength and conditioning programs into the membership site is because it can complement um, those cues both in a position and a pattern of movement. So Nick's actually created um, the, the strength and conditioning programs in, in, in regards to trying to complement um, each of the cues. So how would you see them as, as complementing and how do you see them actually coming and, and aligning with what the technique is given my thought process on and yeah. thoughts on strength and conditioning? Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing and probably one of the, the best things I've seen you put on Instagram is movement changes movement, not necessarily like it, you have to you have to kind of like teach the technique side of things. And that's the same in the S&C space in terms of if we're looking at like even a squat, it's like if you have poor movement, you're not because you're not going to be able to lift a really heavy weight or a heavy enough weight potentially that's going to allow you to develop the strength component or the power component or whatever you're trying to target in the gym potentially or from a strength and conditioning sense. If you if you have poor movement, that's going to be the thing that we're going to have to change first. So even there, we're doing a very similar thing to what you're doing running is we're changing movement first. Yeah. So that's why you'll see some some of the stuff in the in the programs we've got up is very simple, very basic, working on basic movement patterns to then advance to, all right, we know how to squat effectively. Can we now increase the load for a specific purpose? Or do we need to increase the load for a specific purpose? How can we manipulate it to then take it from two legs to one leg or, or whichever direction that's then going to be, I guess, more individualized? This is sort of a nice starting point uh, to sort of tie in nicely, but then also gives us that opportunity to refine um, some of the movement patterning and ultimately coordination side to then come back into our running technique. It's it's teaching those cues in just a slightly more, uh, in a different environment or a more controlled environment maybe where you're nice and stable. So the, the ribs down is the big one that we obviously look at is yeah. if you're stationary, sometimes for some people it might be a little bit easier than, than when they're out there running trying to focus on that. But we're still getting that same development. We're trying, trying to teach the same thing. It's in two different, uh, two different spaces though. I think there's something really important that you mentioned in there about um, building load capacity and, and then in a strength and conditioning sense. So being able to move well yeah. um, in a squat or a deadlift or whatever the, the movement may be um, before then in, yeah. implementing increased uh, either sets, yeah. reps or um, weights. Yeah. And I think this can be actually tied back into what we get taught a lot about or, or we have a good understanding about with triathlon or with, with running um, or running specifically with running loads. So if you're doing it poorly, but then you just start to increase the intensity or you're increasing the distance and the time that you're on your feet doing it, it's no different to if you're in a squat position, but it's a really poor position, then you yep. just start stacking on the weight. The likelihood or the risk of being injured increases rapidly. Yep. Now, for the longest period of time, this hasn't been seen or, or, or kind of um, correlated with a running capacity. It's no, run how you run, um, do more of it load you know 10% or whatever it may be do those increases however if you're doing it poorly the likelihood of you and the risk of you getting injured is huge so i think something like that and starting to actually utilize 
the way that we see every other skill yep. or in this case strength and conditioning and increasing load if you've done poorly is going to increase risk of injury same thing with running so we're bringing it back to this technique side of things where we think about okay if you're going to do it poorly how do you expect not to get injured if you're going to do it poorly increase distance increase intensity and not get injured yep. it's just not going to happen and then we always come back to um, shoes make sure you're doing strength and conditioning make sure you're doing your recovery and nutrition however how about you just get the movement going well or, or do the movement well and all those other pieces to the puzzle are super important yeah. but in this case we're actually trying to create a little bit of a correlation between how we're going to improve that technique in a sense of the strength and conditioning component so that's how they kind of relate to each other and, and why it's kind of been designed in, the, in that way yeah, and ultimately the, the running side of things is we, we improve our, our running form. It's going to help us go out there and, and execute that running technique. When we start to improve in the gym and whether it is the weight goes up or we increase the, the volume that we're doing, that's then aiding us to increase the amount of force we can produce or how well we produce force, which if we can produce force better in a nice, simple, stable way, that's going to help translate over to when we are in that great movement pattern. All right? Now when I'm pushing off, when I'm running, I can produce that same increased amount of force now we're starting to run a little bit quicker, not just as a byproduct of we can push off the ground harder, but also we're applying it in a much more, well, I guess, strategic way or a more dedicated way to allow us to propel forward. And I think also in that is being able to do it for longer. So yeah. even if you don't do any technique work and, and the whole idea about strength and conditioning is to be able to create or produce more force um, or hold it for longer. So you're using a smaller percentage of your maximum strength, yeah. so you're able to hold that for longer. So that's where the strength conditioning becomes really important to running. Now, if you're doing it in a poor manner, but the running technique in a poor manner, yes, you are creating more force and you're able to hold that poor movement for a longer period of time. But also, conversely, if you are running better, if you are using a better position in yeah. a better pattern, then you are able to hold that better movement pattern for longer periods as well. So it's, it comes a time when you're actually practicing and, and improving your running technique where it starts to fall away yep. because your ability to maintain this good movement pattern in a good position um, requires time to create that conditioning. However, the strength allows you to hold a little bit longer for a little bit um, better and they start to relate that way as well. So it's not even just about creating more force and, and being able to do it for a longer period of time. It's be able to improve that position of movement yeah. and be able to hold it for longer. So yeah. It's, it's a combination, yeah. 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 Can't have one without the other. But that, that's where the, the strength conditioning is that supplement to the running because at the end of the day, we need if we're, if we're out there trying to improve our running, we need to go out and run. Um, the stuff that you do external to that is just going to aid, as you said, our ability to go out and, and stay out there running. The last thing we want to do is be sitting down, not being able to run because we're injured or the body can't handle it or we can't sit, we can't go out and run for as long as we, we need to in a session potentially, we can't keep our heart rate down in a session. All of this supplementary work is there to aid that process. The more time we can spend out there running effectively, the better you're gonna get at it. Give Nick a follow because he's always got some really great content uh, in regards to additional stuff, not just certain conditioning, so like lactate thresholds, VO2 and the performance side of, of um, training. Uh, but yeah. Anything else? Don't think so, I think we covered it. Thanks for having us. <laughs>